Don't let the absence of an AI policy be the reason or the excuse uh, that you slow down the adoption of AI across all of your teams. I'm going to walk you through just a very simple template here, uh, and I'll provide a link to it in the notes of this video that can help you uh, get on your journey. And before I dive into it, what's the point of an AI policy? Well, for, for many companies, it's about protecting themselves or protecting individuals, uh, specifically around intellectual property, confidential uh, information going out uh, of the business. But in uh, trying to protect the company, uh, the AI policy is drafted in such a restrictive and negative and pessimistic way that it's not engaged with by uh, the wider teams who are using AI on their own personal accounts regardless. So really think through what is it that you want from your policy? If it is to lock down and shut out use of AI, then uh, it's not going to work and it's not a very effective way of attracting and encouraging employees into your organization. So the template that I'm going to walk you through here is what I'd call an AI positive policy. Uh, it is about encouraging the safe and responsible use of AI uh, and is very light touch in the way that it's drafted. So let's go through section by section. Uh, so whatever your company name is, artificial intelligence usage policy, a version and a date. And up the top here, I've got a too long, didn't read. Like no one's going to read a long policy, whether it's your HR policy, your expenses policy, your IT policy, no one's going to read the full thing. So let's just tell people up front, we believe that AI tools can make you more effective at your job and help us to win as a company. We encourage you to use them. And here's what you need to know. We want you to use AI to make your work better and faster. We want you to try new AI tools and to share what's work, what works. And we want you to ask for help if you're unsure. Keep it simple. Just remember, Keep customer and company confidential information private uh, to double check any AI generated content before you share it externally, um, to use company provided AI tools for any sensitive work and to share your success stories with colleagues because we all want to learn on uh, uh, what's working. And that's it. The rest of this document provides more detailed guidance when you need it. Um, and we'll go through that detailed guidance in, in a minute. But in short, that really should be your AI policy. You know, we believe that it's going to help us to win as a company. We want you to use it. We want you to talk openly and not to feel that you're going to be judged or, or punished for use of AI. Um, but just make sure that you do it sensibly and safely and you don't share uh, private information uh, that you shouldn't. So with that, too long didn't read in mind, uh, we can go into each of the different sections here. Now, first off, the purpose and the scope. In this template you'll have access to in the uh, italics i provide an explanation of what this section is about and then you'll find some example text and i'm not going to read everything as we go through you can find that but in the purpose section we're talking about why uh, we have an ai policy obviously it's to protect ourselves but also to encourage that use uh, the scope of this ai policy and so here we're thinking about who does it apply to well our employees our contractors Maybe if we have AI tools that our partners uh, have access to, uh, and maybe the types of tools that people have got access to. Our AI philosophy, and we touched on this in the too long didn't read. Didn't read. Um, what is it that we believe? Are we AI positive? We're leaning into AI, or are we AI negative? We're pessimistic, and we you know we don't believe it. Um, so just set that policy here, and then roll straight into. This is what we really encourage people to use. Now, this section conflicts with so many AI policies that I see, which is you can't use it for this, you can't use it for that, you can't use it for that. And it's just like a, a teacher talking to you. Here, we want to encourage it department by department in marketing. These are some use cases that we really think could benefit from AI in sales, in R&D, engineering, legal, finance. HR, whichever divisions and the specific use cases for your industry or the geography that you're in, then uh, put some ideas here to get people's um, uh, juices flowing. Data and IP protection guidelines. Well, this is really the heart of why so many companies uh, will be writing an AI policy. 
You know, we need to protect our intellectual property and the things that give us competitive advantage. Um, so we want to explain that a little bit. When using AI tools, follow these practical guidelines to protect our information. And you have to be pragmatic here. You know, people are going to be using these AI tools to talk about their company work. And in doing that, they are going to talk about the, the customers that you work with or a supplier or a particular invoice. And LLMs, uh, AI tools, provide a much better response the more context you provide them. So having a blanket, you are not able to uh, use uh, 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 AI tools with any company information. It's just not going to, to be realistic. So instead, think a little bit here about using approved enterprise AI tools. So that might be that you've got Claude or ChatGPT or Gemini corporate accounts. Um, it might be about breaking down complex tasks. So instead of sharing the customer data in, a, uh, in an Excel, you're just providing the column headings and asking it to do work uh, with that, or potentially providing synthetic data um, to support that. For intellectual property, don't share source code without removing some of the basic business logic. Um, uh, be generic when describing any of our methods or processes. And this is the key one. If you aren't sure, ask. We want to encourage ideas. We want to encourage usage. Um, but if you're not sure, ask. And if you feel like you've made a mistake, report any accidental data exposure immediately. Let us help you to assess and resolve the situation. That's the, the behavior that we want from the policy. Try things, experiment. And if you think you've got stuck, let us know so we can help. Tool selection and approval. Um, so within the world of AI, there are constantly new products and new models that are coming out. And our policy wants to encourage and embrace that. So if new tools are coming out, uh, we maintain a list of pre-approved AI tools. If you find a new tool that's not on the list, submit a brief tool assessment form. Uh, IT will review it and respond uh, very quickly. And the default is to approve unless we uncover specific risks. This is all about um, avoiding new technologies and tools being forced underground because your policy does not permit them. Best practices. Now, you're going to have a wider change enablement program that's going to include uh, you know, training and uh, in intranet and office hours and so on. Um, but we're just going to highlight some of that in this policy to get the best results from AI. Um, uh, Verify your outputs, learn what works, uh, use uh, uh, Claude projects or ChatGPT projects uh, to provide more context. So just some basic best practice there on how to get the best out of AI and to share across your team. Training and support. I mentioned you're going to have a, a broad change enablement program. Just highlight what some of those items are, how people can get um, more advice and guidance. <clears throat> Compliance and monitoring. Again, this goes back to the data and the intellectual property protection. Um, we do not want this to be a very, very um, uh, you know, onerous section. If you do this, you will be in trouble. We will have enforcement. There will be punishments because that just drives AI usage underground. So instead, it's about trusting our employees. We will provide some monitoring, but the reasons for that are that we want to uncover great use cases. We want to understand how these tools work within our industry and company's context. And we want to make sure that we can support you. So where we are monitoring usage, it's with a positive intent rather than trying to catch people out. Reviews and updates. Uh, the world of AI is moving very fast and therefore this policy needs to be flexible and dynamic. We're going to update it at least every quarter. Um, to add in new tools, uh, new use cases that we've learned about, uh, to remove any restrictions that we now feel comfortable with. Um, so it's quite a fluid uh, uh, document. I'm going to show you this in a minute. This AI policy is also provided as a Claude project or ChatGPT project, which you can engage with and ask about your specific use case. Um, and then finally, uh, getting help. Uh, make it easy for everyone in your team to get support. So that might be through an AI business partner network, which is where you provide people from your AI core team uh, out into each department. Um, it might be your AI champions network, which is where you've got people in those teams who are sort of hand raisers and are early adopters. 
And then you might have Slack and Teams uh, channels and so on so that people can get that kind of support. And then you're going to provide an appendix with a list of tools. And then down the bottom here, I provide you with some implementation notes just to give you some guidance as you're creating that policy out. So there you go. And that's seven pages. Yours might be a little bit longer or shorter, but uh, focus it in on this TLDR. Too long, didn't read. We are leaning into AI. We want to support you. You are not going to get in trouble for experimenting and using it. Um, so uh, play safely, but do use it. Now, I mentioned uh, about once you've created your policy, um, then you can post it on the internet and uh, no one will go and read it. Um, so why not make it more interactive and dynamic and actually demonstrate that you really are leaning into AI? And so what I've done here is to create a custom GPT. Um, you could also do this as a, uh, a project in Claude or ChatGPT if you're on a Teams account. And all I've done here in the GPT is to load up the policy. I've written one for Acme Inc. And we've got some suggested questions here. What company AI, AI tools do we have? Can I do this with AI? Um, I think I've shared some confidential data. So, oops, I think I've shared some confidential data. Let's click on that. And uh, this is going to uh, help guide me through. Um, if you believe you shared confidential data, it's important. So report it. Here's our AI security Slack channel. Um, if that isn't accessible, you can email the team here. Um, document the situation. Consult one of your AI champions or an AI business partner. Um, you can always use your Acme AI Hub account for sensitive work. That's the company's ChatGPT implementation. So just an, uh, a really nice example of how AI can bring a very static and uh, boring and dry document. I've tried to make it not boring, but um, a static document and actually make it interactive so that people can start saying, for example, uh, can I use um, my personal chat GPT subscription to build a proposal for a customer? I am trying to sell into. It just makes your policy interactive and engaging and a great example of how people can use this for any other policies in their company. So there we go. I'll provide links to both the custom GPT and uh, to this uh, draft policy in the video notes. And just let me know if you've got any questions. Happy to help.